ओके लेक्चर सिक्स Let us define scalar product. Scalar product of two vectors a and b is defined as a simple scalar product. It has to be a scalar and it is not going to be a vector. It is going to be a real number. So scalar product is defined as absolute value of a into absolute value of b into cosine of the angle between them. So denoted by a dot b is equal to absolute value of a into absolute value of b cos. Theta where theta is angle between a and b. Now, again the way we learned in complex number that the notation that we have created every time had a different meaning. Now this dot carries a different meaning than multiplication because this is a pro dot product of two vectors. So a and b are vectors and they are getting multiplied and therefore this dot has a little different meaning compared to multiplication of two real numbers we have to keep this in mind while solving the problem sometimes we put that dot and consider it as a real number multiplication and make mistake okay so there is no dot here but this is multiplication real number multiplication this is real number multiplication and because all three of them are real numbers in rhs However, in LHS, a bar dot b bar is a scalar quantity and it is a notation. So this is dot newly defined dot. That is, this is meant for dot product, dot product of two vectors. Okay. So the moment we have this definition, the angle between the two vectors is theta. And now suppose I have vector a and vector b. <coughs> and if angle theta is acute, of course cos of acute angle theta is going to be positive therefore we can say if dot product a dot b is a positive quantity absolute value of a that is length of vector a length of vector b both of them are going to be positive quantities and therefore if dot product is positive the angle between the vectors is acute if dot product is uh, if dot product is zero then the angle between them is 90 degree and if dot product is negative that means they have uh, negative dot product is negative that means the angle between them is obtuse so this is what is the understanding as far as dot product sign is concerned then using this dot product definition we can find out the length of the vector very quickly if we take dot product of a vector with itself it is going to be mod a into mod a into cos of theta where theta is the angle between a and a which is 0 and cos of 0 is 1 therefore mod a square is equal to a dot a so that is how you can find out the length of the vector using dot product that is a uh, very good application of a scalar product then we can also find out the angle between the two vectors so cos of theta is going to be a dot b divided by absolute value of a into absolute value of b if we take cos inverse then we get the angle so this scalar product is going to be very useful in doing the algebra of vectors because it helps us to get the magnitude of the vector it helps us to get the angle between the two vectors okay so angle between the two vectors in terms of we can write this as a dot b upon radical a dot a into radical b dot b which is the same thing if you understand that now i have a couple of questions true or false a dot a dot b is equal to a dot c question one a dot b is equal to a dot c therefore this implies b is equal to c true or false think keep your answer ready and then check of course i am not going to explain this because it is trivial question number two uh, a dot b is equal to 0 implies a is perpendicular to b. This is second question for true and false. 
keep your answer ready and after defining scalar product when I am asking these questions that means they are something to do it has something to do with the definition of scalar product so if you have understood the definition correctly you should get these answers correctly now <clears throat> given two points O and A, identify the locus of point P in each of following cases. So, O is fixed, O is given to you, we can call it as origin. O is fixed, A is fixed and you are supposed to find out locus of P such that OP case 1 OP dot OA is positive so P is find somewhere such that OP dot OA so OA vector is this this is OA vector and you are supposed to find out what is the locus of OP dot OA greater than 0 OP dot OA equal to 0 and OP dot OA less than zero so think about it it is simple and i am not giving you the answers given two points second next question is given two points a and b find the locus of point p such that p a dot p b what are the questions here to o p dot o a equal to 0 and third question op dot a less than 0 all the look look out point p you are supposed to find out in this case a and b are given and the p is the point which is moving and then what is the locus of p a dot p b is less than 0 what is the locus of p a dot p b equal to 0 and what is the locus of p a dot p b so spend good amount of time in developing your understanding about uh, these different loci it will help you eventually now let us learn the properties of scalar product one a, a dot b is it equal to b dot a of course yes because in rhs we have multiplication of real numbers and multiplication in real numbers is commutative therefore commutativeness is achieved second property that we would like to check is a dot opposite of b is that equal to opposite of a dot b and opposite of a into opposite b opposite of a dot opposite of b is that equal to a dot b you can cross check that these two properties are also true. Third property scalar multiple times a dot scalar multiple times b is equal to mn times a dot b is this one and you will find that this is also going to be true. Now If PQ is a line or maybe a vector B is PQ and this is the line which is AB which is vector A and we draw perpendicular from P on AB and perpendicular from Q on vector AB let us call them L and M then we call LM as a projection of vector B that is line segment PQ on vector A. So projection of B on A and that projection this is going to be the line parallel to vector A therefore the angle between A and B is going to be theta therefore LM which is projection lm is a projection of vector b on vector a is going to be absolute value of b cos theta okay and then this is what is projection so scalar product 
of a dot b is a product of length of a with the projection of b on a so if i want to say that a dot b a dot b i can say that absolute value of a into ln which is length of the vector on which you are taking the projection into projection of the other vector on your original vector so this is important so this relation is important then we need to check whether dot product is distributive distributive means a dot b plus c is that going to be equal to a dot b plus a dot c and how do we prove it and it is yet another simple proof using this projection method and i hope you should be able to do it do it and check whether dot product is distributive or not now so if we take minus sign in between it will become minus sign here so subtraction it distributes over subtraction also make sure that this four identities are also proved one a plus b dot a minus b equal to a square minus b square two a plus b square is equal to a square plus twice a dot b plus b square 3 a minus b bracket square is equal to a square minus 2 a dot b plus b square 4 a dot b can be written as 1 by 4 into absolute value of a plus b bracket square minus absolute value of a minus b bracket square so these are some identities that we need to remember okay you can very quickly prove them using the definition of scalar product now we come to solving problems using dot product so first problem is in triangle abc prove cosine rule cosine rule that is ac square is it plus cb square plus twice ac into cb so plus twice ac dot cb is equal to ab square this is a projection rule uh this part of the projection rule in trigonometry we have written it in little different way ab projection on bc it is one and the same thing so you can cross check that the projection rule using vectors and projection uh, sorry cosine rule using vectors we have written it correctly and now you are supposed to prove this identity using dot product so solution ac plus cb is equal to ab now if we take dot product of lhs with lhs and rhs with rhs ac plus cb dot ac plus cb we get ab dot ab and if we simplify we get the projection so it's a single line proof of cosine rule uh, using vectors that is what makes it interesting question 2 prove projection rule projection rule is in any triangle b cos a the c cos b is equal to b cos a plus a just a minute c is cancel so b cos a plus a cos b b cos a plus a cos b is equal to c you should be able to use the dot product to prove projection rule as well 
question three. Now these are simple problems, but why why we are taking these problems in the class is to make sure that you are using dot product very effectively and you are used to use the dot product uh, in a very good way. So the question number three is through that diagonals of rhombus are perpendicular. So if you have a rhombus. you should prove that a b c d a c and b d are perpendicular to each other so if you take solution a c dot b d you should prove that this dot product is eventually equal to zero and you can write a c in terms of a b and b c there are all the four sides are equal so magnitude is going to be equal and hence you can do it now little difficult maybe not proved in pure geometry problem which we can do it very quickly in vectors in the general quadrilateral abcd not trapezium nothing Through that, well, P and Q are the midpoints. If I join AC, and I take midpoint, and if I join. BD and take midpoint. So this is P. This is Q. Four times PQ square appears there in RHS. So this is going to be good problem for practicing algebra. So these are some problems based on scalar product. And okay, there is one more. Prove Apollonius theorem. Apollonius theorem is AB square plus AC square. Is equal to two times AD square plus two times BD square. You can prove this using vectors very quickly, where D is a midpoint of BC Apollonius. And then there are a couple of problems which I had written in my notes, which are also not solved in the notes. You can try. They are simple problems. So before we start our orthogonal base system, that is I J K. Uh, we should stop and do it in the next lecture thank you